Tiffany's Shear begins ten lines from the top of Daf Pei. We begin with a Dibur Hamaschal from the Mishnah Rabbi Eliezer Oimer Loki El Osris Chamacholeks. This is, of course, a quote from the Mishnah that we had on our previous summit. You might notice on Daf Ayin Tesumid Beis the diamond names Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Eliezer, whereas Rabbi Akiva said that a Sris Odom is Cholets. The opinion of Rabbi Lezer is the opposite, that a Sris Chamo is Cholets, and the Mishnah presented their respective reasons. Of course, the Sris Chamo is someone who is born, a, a male, who is born in this uh, state where he's, he doesn't mature properly and he's incapable of procreation as a healthy male would ordinarily be. The Gemara will elaborate on how you can identify a Saurus uh, as we go on in the Sukhyas. So, uh, we have on the side a Nosei uh, Mivne heading where we have a, you will see shortly, a double underline is featured later in the Gemara. And this represents Yishuvim. These are uh, re- resolutions Listira uh, to what appears to be a contradiction Beshitas Rebbe Eliezer Within the opinion of Rebbe Lezer, Besris Chamo Im Hu Cholets. A Sris Chamo, someone who is born as a Soros, does he do Chalitza? Chalitza, of course, is the situation where his uh, brother had died, leaving no children, and he is the, a, the surviving brother. Does he do Chalitza, or is he simply totally exempt? The uh, Gemara. Viraminhu. We now raise a Stira, a contradiction. Ben Esrim Shon of Lohevi Cyrus, a person, a man who is 20 years old and has not produced the two hairs that identify someone as having reached adulthood, the two pubic hairs. Yaviu Raya Shuhu Ben Esrim, proof shall be brought that he is 20 years old. The Hu Hasoris. Now, this expression, Hu Hasoris, Rashi adds. Very importantly, uh, Rashi said, uh, you'll see a few lines down from here, Klomar Vinoldu Bo Simone Soris. In addition to his not having produced the pubic hairs and has reached, a- reached age 20, he also has other signs that he is a Soros. And that the, this uh, source does not elaborate on those other signs, but let's take that as a given that there are other signs. The Gemara later will discuss that. And thusly it is explained in Maseches Nida in that particular chapter called Yotze Dofen, the E. Lono, the Simoni Soros. If the, those special physical signs of Srisus have not appeared, Amrinon, Haidelomaisi, we say that that which he hasn't produced. The uh, the pubic hairs mishum katnasu. It's because of his being legally considered a minor. And legally speaking, he is viewed as a minor until he passes the majority of his uh, life. Majority of life, we say, based on the posikimation or yisenu bohem shivim shana that a person's life is the expected life is 70 years so rove the majority of that would be passing his 35th year so oh, if a person has not produced the pubic hairs and as at the, and, li- and likewise has not shown signs the soris signs is viewed as a minor uh, uh, until 35 we continue in the uh, Tanaic source the uh, it reads as follows. We say that if he's reached 20 and he's produced the signs of Sresus and has not produced the pubic hairs, lo chaylets v'lo miyabem, he doesn't participate in the chalitza ceremony, that which releases the sister-in-law to marry whomever she wants, nor does he do yibum. Bas esrim v'lo heviyosh desars. Now we go to the female side of thing, a girl of 20 that hasn't produced the pubic hairs, yoviyu rayashi bas esrim, if they bring proof that she is 20 years old, and she is what we refer to as the islandess. The islandess is an expression referring to a woman who doesn't mature uh, normally and uh, is hence incapable of procreation. Everything we've said till now is in the name of Beis Hillel. Uh, when we say everything, the information plus the ages. 
Beis Shammai disagrees and says that male and female uh, is determined already at age 18. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, and here is where we become interested because Rabbi Eliezer is the shita, the, the opinion that we're focusing on in our discussion. He says, Hazochor Kedivre Beis Hillel. That means 20 year old a man. Uh, and Unikeval Kedivre Beis Shammai. And the female at 18. Why is the female established at an earlier age? In general, a woman matures, reaches adulthood, or matures, progresses more rapidly than a man. Now what we see from here, if when reading Rebbe Lezer in the context of this source, he's basically saying that a sris chamo does not do chalitza. And that, that you can see in Rashi Hazochar Kedivri Beisilo Almo le Rabbi Eliezer. You see from here, according to Rabbi Eliezer, Sris Chama Lo Chalitz. We're working with the uh, with a given that this source is describing a Sris Chama, someone who was born of that way. Not as not as a function of uh, um, some type of uh, injury. But he's rather born that way. So our job now is simply to resolve this seeming contradiction. Whereas in the Mishnah, Rabbi Lezer says that a Sris Chamel is Cholet. Here we have Rabbi Lezer on record is saying that a Sris Chamel is not Cholet. Omar Romi Bar Dikuli, Omar Shmuel, Chozar Bo Rabbi Eliezer. So the first resolution is simply to say that Rabbi Lezer had changed his mind. So that it's not that we have a contradiction in sources, but we have a, an earlier opinion and then a change of opinion. So now the question is, which, from which, which was his original position that he changed from? Toshma. So we're going to bring a, a Tanaic source that matches our Mishnah. Desanya, Rabbi Lezer Omer, Sriz Chama Choyleitz, the Cholzim Li'ishtoi, a Sriz Chama, if he is the surviving brother, he will do Chalitza with the sister-in-law, and if he dies, so then the, whatever surviving brothers there are, will do Chalitza, one of them will do Chalitza with his widow. And, and you'll ask, well, why is a Sriz Chama Considered eligible for the rules of Chalitza, Shikain b'Minon Misrapin b'Alxadri Shel Mitzrayim. We find people who are Sris Chama can actually be healed from that in the city of Alexandria in Egypt. So now this is a an, a second, an additional Tanaic source that matches the Mishnah, and uh, Rashi. Uh, in Dibor Masel Toshma, he says, "Well, we have a, this brisa like the Mishnah, but now, the, as, a, as a result, we have two sources saying Sris Chamel is Cholets, and one source that indicates, according to Rabbi Lezer, that he's not Cholets. So, two against one, we opt for this approach, the approach like the Mishnah. The uh, next answer, Rabbi Lozer Omer. Don't, don't confuse the names. This is an Amora, Rabbi Lozar." He explains Olam Lo Hodar Bay. There is no change in opinions, uh, no change of mind. The Chit Nanahi, the source in which we saw Rebbe Lazar saying Hazochor Kedivrei Beis Hillel, is Laoinshim. It's regarding at what age one becomes subject to uh, punishment. We'll take a look at Rashi. The Chit Nanahi Hazochor Kedivrei Beis Hillel. The appearance of Rebbe Lezer in that longer Tanaic source, in which he says that the male is treated like Beis Hillel, Lav Amai Di Amri, it's not a reference to that which was stated earlier in that source that it said Lo Cholets, that the Sris Chama doesn't do Cholets, because Rebbe Lezer holds that he does. Elo, Lashmi'inen, the Achie Ben Esrim, the appearance of Rebbe Lezer in that particular source is to tell me a second point, a side point, if you will, that until age 20, chashvinon lay koton im lo hevi. That until age 20, if you're dealing with a man that has not produced the pubic hairs, so until age 20, he is viewed halachically as a minor. The umikan im lo hevi. 
Elishu Soris. Beyond age 20, though he does not have the pubic hairs, Halocha views him as an adult. And even though he is a man that has no, that doesn't never show never uh, show uh, showed forth the pubic hairs, he nevertheless is considered an adult. Whereas it may be obvious to all of uh, our listeners, an adult in Jewish law, generally speaking, is at age thirteen, thirteen and a day, assuming there are pubic hairs. But in the, the case of the individual doesn't produce those pubic hairs he does not, he's not considered an adult until age 20 and uh, adult, adulthood uh, incorporates within it the obligation or the, the uh, that being subject to punishment uh, let's continue in the Gemara Itmar Ochal Chelef and maybe before we actually read the Gemara we glance at the side the no say the topic heading reads Hevi Simone Soris a person showed signs of being a Soris V'acharkach Hevi Shtei Cyrus and afterwards then produced the pubic hairs Nafkamina Lo'ochal Chelev Mi Ben Yud Beis Ad Ben Yud Ches the ages that we're going to be dealing with so that they shouldn't be confusing the even though it's, sometimes it appears we're dealing with a male, when you see age 12 mentioned, you know that you're dealing with a female. So, uh, but the same would apply over to a male, just adjusting the age by uh, adding a year to the uh, starting point. So now we have a case where someone had, uh, our introduction me basically says that you have someone who appeared to be a saurus, and then later produced the, uh, the pubic hairs, what does this show us retroactively? And imagine a case where, during the uh, the uh, time between age twelve and age eighteen, where we thought she was a minor because she hadn't produced the pubic hairs, uh, she had eaten chelev. Chelev is forbidden at forbidden sections of a, of an, an kosher animal. Though, if the chelev sections are forbidden, and one who uh, would eat chelev un- uh, unwittingly would have to bring a sacrifice a korban chatos a, that's a sin offering so itmar ochal chelev mi ben shteim esrei v'yoyim echod ad ben shmoin esrei and as Rashi says we're dealing with a little girl who after age 12 before age 18 uh, and this is within the sheet of Rabbi Eliezer above that said that when you come dealing with a Nikeva we follow Beis Shammai standard the 18 year old standard <coughs> so she during those years she had eaten some Chelev the Noldu Bo Simone Soros and then there appeared the signs of Srisus so that at age 18 we can establish that they are an adult only, only at age 18, not before. Le'achar mikan hevi shtei Cyrus, and afterwards, two pubic hairs appeared. Rav Omar nase soris lemafreya. Rav says that this uh, individual becomes retroactively a soris. In other words, what do we mean retroactively? That means that from age 12. Rav is going to consider them an adult. If we take a look at the uh, the Rashi uh, on the second wide line under the Gemara text, he opens up making the point that even though we're speaking in masculine grammar here, we are dealing with a little girl. Aidi Dairi Beloshin Zohar Katani Soris Kevan Sheavra Shmoin Esrek Rebelazar. Since they passed age 18 and did not produce prior to that the pubic hairs, even though they produced the hairs afterwards, after 18, it's not considered of any significance. The loy amrino. Now note, we have a phrase marking in the Rashi. All of this is what we do not say. We do not say, the hashta aisi. Igloi milsa the ad hashto koton have that uh, since they brought forth the pubic hairs now up till now they were a minor uh, the besiris talia milsa everything is dependent on the hairs so if we don't say that ella besoris machsikinon lei rather we 
uh, view them as a sorus and not a minor. Let's make sure that we have these terms down. These are halachic terms. A minor would be someone who is exempt from punishments and sacrificial obligations. And a sorus is an adult that is obligated in punishment or is subject to punishment and obligated in sacrifices if need be. So, and as a result of of what we described, she is considered retroactively a a an adult from age twelve, the age at which she was fit to bring to we would have expected normally the two pubic hairs to appear. Damar high the low I I see Mishum de Soros Havi and we explain why didn't she produce the hairs at twelve because she was a Soros the Hadisanya the Kamon that which is appears later in the Tanaic source which reads the Afilu Havi liachar mikan Harehu kesoros the Chol Dvarav that expression means lemafreyahu de Koamar umishnei Mosor Havi Gedola the Soros Havi so we're seeing in the Rashi a clear explanation of this opinion, the opinion of Rav, that there is a retroactive adulthood back to age 12. Let us contrast this situation with the we'll have the regular Sora situation and that is that there was no pubic hairs for the girl up till age 18 and, and uh, they show signs, the Sora signs appear um, at only at that age do they become uh, categorized as an adult, and that in fact is what Shmuel says. Shmuel Amar Koton Hoya Ba'Oisa Shah, and there, she is not considered a Gedola, an adult, retroactively, rather from age eighteen onwards. We continue. Maskif Law Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef raises a question. According to Rav's approach, that there is retroactive uh, adulthood from age 12. <coughs> so Rav Yosef asks, Le Rav, according to the opinion of Rav, notice we have a, a colon after Rav Yosef, because don't read the Gemara as Maskif law Rav Yosef Le Rav, that Rav Yosef asked Rav, because Rav Yosef lived quite a while after Rav, but he asks according to the opinion of Rav. Le Rav, Ayulinus le Rebbe Meir Yehei Lo Knas. Now there's one, it's a, a short piece of uh, Gemara, for just a couple words, but it entails a, a knowledge of an entire sugya beforehand. The, the best way to approach this is simply to go right to the Rashi to give us all the background in order to appreciate this question. So we continue with the Rashi in the middle of the wide lines. Ayulinus le Rebbe Meir Yehei Lo Knas. Knas is a fine for a girl that is raped. And the halacha concerning a girl that is raped applies uh, basically, according to the opinion of Rabbi Meir, to a girl who's raped between ages 12 and 12 and a half, assuming that she is a virgin. Ailinus Rabbi Meir lo knas, hamishim kesef, 50 pieces of silver, that's the fine uh, instituted by the Torah. Aloma Tanya Bamasechis Ksubis. Why then, if this is correct, that there is retroactive adulthood, why then does it say in the Tanaic source in Masechis Ksubis, Ailinus Ain Law, Lo Knas Velo Pitui? There is no fine, the Knas, the rape fine, nor the seduction fine. Be'elinar. Be'elinar is the name of the third parak of Masechus Ksubis. Umukminin lo kerebi meir. And we say that that Tanaic source that says ain lo knas is according to the Tana Rabbi Meir. Domark Tana ain lo knas. He says, as opposed to the Rabbonon, Rabbi Meir is of the opinion that a minor girl who is raped, a child who is raped, there is no knas payment. The Torah demands the knas payment only when a na'ara, na'ara is a girl from 12 to 12 and a half, who is a virgin that happened to be raped. For Ailinus, Hoyl the Ain Law Cyrus, Ktanahi, Bayomim Shoisa Ruyo Linaris. And an Ailinus, since she doesn't produce the pubic hairs, she remains a minor during those days that she 
if she was normal, would have been considered a na'ara. Na'ara is that ne- is that next a- uh, halachic age bracket beyond the minor. But we explain that according to Rabbi Meir, there is no knas because, first of all, a ktana doesn't have a knas and an islandess. And since she doesn't have Cyrus, she's a Ketan in those days. And we do not say, again, we have a long phrase marking, all of this we do not say. We don't say, since she passed age 18 and didn't produce the hairs, she becomes an adult retroactively. To require a fine payment the 50 kesef payment, 50 pieces of silver to be paid by he who had raped her uh, after age 12. So now we're saying, we we'll go back to the Gemara, let's read that line again. Rav Yosef's question is, according to Rav, that there is retroactive adulthood, Eilinus le Rebbe Meir, Yehelo Knas, then the Eilinus, according to Rebbe Meir, should necessitate a knas payment an islandess who uh, this girl who was raped at age 12 when she reaches age 18 and after that she produces the two pubic hairs then there there is a situation of an islandess requiring a knas payment so why was it said so so uh, unqualified so categorically that according to Rabbi Meir and Eilinus there is never any knas Uh, Omar Le Abaye Abaye answers Rav Yosef's question Mikatnusa Yotsusa Le Beger Beger is the the basic word that we the the basis of the word Bagrus Bagrus maybe is more common to some of you there's Narus and Bagrus the Bakrus is age 12 and a half and up. In terms of Torah uh, payment requirements, in the case of rape, beyond age 12 and a half, there is no fine uh, payment. There are other payments that, are, that, are, that, one mu- that must be made, but as far as the, the fine of 50 kesef, there, that is not paid for a girl who is a bogeris. So according to Ra- Rav, what happens when she passes 18, having show- produced signs of being a, an islandess and then producing the pubic hairs, which Rav will tell you retroactively she becomes a gedola back to age 12. But what happens with her, she goes from the state of, of, of being a minor of katnus to becoming a bogeris. So on those technical grounds, even though there is retroactive adulthood, but technically she doesn't experience the halachic category of being a na'ara. And that's why there is no knas. Omar Lay, Rav Yosef, upon hearing Abaye's explanation, he says, Kol kihani milim al yusah yusamru mi shamoi. Uh, all wonderful things like this it should only be that it's said in my name and the Sanya and then he brings a the, uh, the Gemara it brings a Tanaic source or Rabbi Yosef himself quotes a Tanaic source that bears this out it says Eina soros nidon keben so more a soros will not uh, be cu- judged in the Torah as the rebellious son the ben so more is the, the uh, Parsha in the Torah referring to a, a son who steals money from his parents and buys meat and wine, etc. It's a, an entire topic unto itself. But this, and of course, that child is stoned as a result of his behavior. The Asaurus, though, cannot be judged as a Ben Somer. Lefisha'ain Ben Somer Nidon Elo B'chasima Zokon Hatachton. A Ben Somora is judged as such only if he has this physical sign of having uh, hairs around his, what's called here the lower beard, that's a, uh, a, a type of euphemism, it's hairs around the male organ. The Ain Eilinus, the Doinus Kinam Rasa, and likewise a, an Eilinus cannot be judged as a Na Rasa, 
Uh, Naram Rasa is in English is translated as the betrothed maiden, but it's a, a girl who, after age twelve, uh, received money in of marriage money to marry some man, and one who has uh, some outsider who has relations with her at that point, intimacy with her, is going to be uh, they'll be high of skila stoning. So that category of Naram Rasa is inapplicable to an islandess. Shemi Katnusa Yotsusa Lebeger. Now we dashed underline. That's the main point. Because a an islandess goes from the state of of of, of minor immediately to the state of Bogeres. And she doesn't experience the interim uh, age halachic category known as Naarus. Omar Rebi Avot Simone Soris Vailinis Uben Shmoina Ein Oisin Bohem Maisa Achi Ben Esrim. We'll take a look at Rashi. Uh, Simone Soris Vailinis Ein Oisin Bohem Maisa Lachzikam Begadolim. We're looking at Rashi three lines from the bottom. The uh, signs of Soris and Ailinis, though, though they appear, we don't do anything about it. In other words, to c- consider them gedolim, that's lachzikom begedolim, to categorize them as adult, usrisim, adult who adults who are soris or islanders, ad shu bnei esrim velo heviu. Assuming only uh, or, uh, that we, we do not consider them as adults until they've reached age twenty and haven't produced any pubic hairs. From age twelve by a by a girl until age twenty, we look we ex, uh, we look with expectation. If they produce the pubic hairs, then they are viewed as minor until they until they produce those hairs. And if by age twenty they don't produce those pubic hairs, they are then considered gedolim adult. Uben Shmoina, we continue in the Rashi. Shenolad Lishmoina Chadoshim. Here is a an infant that's born after only eight months of pregnancy. Ein Oisin Boy Maisel Achziko Keben Kayoma. An eight month pregnancy is generally, in terms of halacha, we view as an insufficient time of of producing a healthy living person, and therefore we don't consider him a Ben Kayoma. Even though, as an infant, he's, he appears, he emerges with uh, fingernails and with hair. We nevertheless do not say that he is going to live uh, with certainty until he reaches age 20. So now we uh, continue in the Gemara with a question. Second line from the bottom, the Gemara asks, Uben Shmoina Mi does an eight month pregnancy live? Here we're describing an eight month pregnancy reaching where we don't consider them a, a Ben Kayoman. By the way, this concept of considering someone a Ben Kayoma has halachic ramifications. Uh, possibly in the realm of of murder, if a person kills a, an individual that is not considered someone capable of living, so the halacha will view that kind of murder victim or uh, the, the perpetrator in a different light than if he killed a regular living healthy person. That's uh, we're just touching the tip of an iceberg, but. We're just uh, suggesting that that's a nafkamina when you say someone is a ben kayoma versus being considered a nafel. A nafel is someone who wouldn't live. So here we have someone, uh, or we have a question, how can you say that an eight-month pregnancy would reach age 20 when an eight-month pregnancy is, is an infant that's going to probably die soon after birth? Vahatanya. We have the following source, ben shmoina, that means an eight-month pregnancy uh, that is then born, harehu keeven, he is considered like a stone, and here we're talking in terms of Hilchis Shabbos. Stones is the uh, the uh, archetype of something that you cannot move because it's the because the ultimate form of muktza when it comes to Shabbos. So an eight-month pregnancy is considered like a stone, something of no use. 
the osir letaltalo, and you cannot move that infant around on Shabbos. This is considered as good as dead. Avol imoi sheicholov umenikosov. Now, if you can't move the child, what about the mother? The mother starts to lactate and produces milk, mother's milk. Uh, she uh, can bend over without moving the child, and the child can suckle from her. That's uminikoso, and, and nurse the child. Because of the danger to the mother. So from this source, we see that a, a Ben Shmoyim, an eight-month pregnancy, is considered as, as if he's not there, as if he's dead already. So, how, did, how, does, how is this to be reconciled, we'll say, with Rabbi Avol's teaching, that a Ben Shmoyim can live quite a few years? The Gemara answers, Hocha on this source that says we view him as a, as a stone is Kishilo Gomru Simonov where when it was born it did not show any signs it didn't have uh, the, ch- the infant didn't have uh, fingernails and it had no hair the Sanya Ezeben Shmoina what is a an 8 month pregnancy that we consider as if it's uh, as good as dead Kol Shilo Kolu Loi Chadoshav a child that did not have a full term pregnancy. Rebbe Omer, Simonim Mochichin Olov. The signs show what the situation is. Saro Vitsiponov Shelo Gomru. Hair and fingernails that haven't completed. Completed, we say, when we say completed, completed like would be the case with a regular healthy infant. Taimo Delo Gomru. The reason that it's considered a Ben Shmoina, with all of the ramifications of being considered a stone, etc., that's because the signs weren't complete, the fingernails and hair. Ha Gomru. However, had a child been born in its eighth month, but it also had the complete signs, Amrinon, we would then say, Hi Bar Zayinhu. This is really a seven month pregnancy. It, it was uh, in. Uh, uh, g- gestation for a full seven months, which is considered a normal type of pregnancy. Vishtauye hu dishtoi, and in terms of its emerging in birth, that was delayed, and that's why it came out only in the eighth month. That's a function of a delay. So that there are, there in, in terms of pregnancies. There are the majority of pregnancies require a nine month pregnancy to produce a healthy infant. There, uh, there is a situation known as a seven month pregnancy where the entire pregnancy, we'll say, is is hastened and it's whatever needs to be completed is completed after or within seven months. A birth during the eighth month, we say, is. Is, is something that is uh, unusual. It's it's not not just unusual, but it's it's a sign of uh, it's a reason for uh, suspecting uh, sh- 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 death shortly thereafter. However, if it is born in the eighth month with the signs with the Syro Litsipon of Gomru, so we say it's really a seven month pregnancy, which we said is a su- is sufficient time to constitute a regular full uh, healthy pregnancy. And it simply was delayed in emerging. And we, let's take a look at Rashi. Uh, Bar Shiva, who third line from the top. Ulishiva uh, Nigmorot Suraso. Its form was completed after seven months. Elishinishta Vichai, or Shinishta Vichai. It simply delayed and will live. Vashmi'in and Rabbi Avo. Now, Rabbi Avo, who appeared at the bottom of Amun Aleph, told us. Dafilu the Rebbe, even according to Rebbe, who said that signs show us that it's really a seven-month pregnancy, which you would say is a sign of something healthy. Lo le bebar kayoma ben esrim. We don't consider him as a living, as a full-fledged living person, as someone who's considered healthy until he reaches age twenty. So that you have, it would appear then at this point in the Gemara, you have t- 
two situations one an eight month pregnancy where the signs are not complete that already at, at the at the get go is considered a nafel someone a child that is not going to live and it seems like without any doubt then you have this situation where it's born in the eighth month with complete signs and yet we're not going to consider him a ben kayoma uh, someone who will live until age until he, it reaches age 20 and we suggested before a possible nafkamina a halachic ramification the uh, gem- let's continue in the Gemara Elaha di Ovad Rava Toisfa Uvda Biisha Shaholach by Luminisayam Vishtoi Ad Shresar Yarchi Shasa Vi Achshire. The story involves Rava Toisfa Paskind, as Ovad Uvda means he ruled regarding a woman whose husband went abroad and didn't come back and uh, 12 months since his departure uh, at, 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 at uh, let's say 12 months after that husband's departure this woman was a married woman this woman gave birth to a child one year after her husband left now how, how do you explain that one year after the husband left this woman produces a child very suspicious wouldn't you say wouldn't it appear that that maybe she, uh, let's say, three months after her husband left, she already she was she had intimacy with some other man. This is a married woman, and the child would be a mamzer. Yet Rava Toisva says no. Twelve months after the husband left, she gives birth the achshire, and that means that Rav Rava Toisva said the child is kosher. He's not a mamzer. Now, how, how, could, how could you explain that? So, Keman, is this ruling Kerebi? The Omar Mishtoha? Is this a ruling like a, like a singular authority? A minor opinion? A minority opinion? That of Rebbe, who says that, that children uh, can delay, can be delayed in their birth? And in this case, we're saying that the child really was the product of that husband who had relations with her a year earlier the pregnancy was completed after we'll say nine months and there was a three month delay in its birth so is Rav coming to this conclusion based on the opinion of a a minority opinion the Gemara responds Kevon de Iko Rabon Shimon Ben Gamliel de Omar Mishtoi. Since, in addition to Rebbe, there's also Rabbi Shimon Leo who acknowledges this this phenomenon of delay, of of birth delay, Kerabim Ovad. So Rova Teisva's ruling is not based on a singular authority, but a major a a a, 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 a ruling based on the opinion of the many Rabbim. Desanya, and here we have the source where Rabbi Shimon Leo alludes to this phenomenon of delay. It says, Rabbi Shimon Leo Omer Kol Shishoha Shloishim Yoim Ba'odam Eino Nefel, and that means a uh, a child, uh, even if it didn't experience the full uh, the full nine month pregnancy. It's born before the, the nine months lapse. If it lives 30 days, if the child lives 30 days, it's not considered a nafel. It's not considered a... a, a nafel often is translated as a miscarriage, but it, in halacha it's, it has a, a broader uh, connotation, namely a child that wouldn't live. So why is that? So Rav Shemuel is is in effect saying that really the child was complete after seven months, and we say a seven a seven month pregnancy is a can, can be a very it can be a, it's a healthful normal term pregnancy, and it simply delayed in emerging until the eighth month, and in order to establish that we say well if it continues living after its birth 
in the eighth month for 30 days, so we say that this was a shihiya, a ishtohi, the same lotion you see here, kol shishah. It, that it, there was a del- delay. In this case, Shal Shal Shem it, it lasted 30 days. But for our purposes, the child's pregnancy was really a seven month pregnancy, which we say is a healthful type pregnancy. And it was delayed in emerging, and hence it emerged in the eighth month. And Rabbi Shimon Leal, then, in addition to Rabbi, acknowledges this phenomenon. Hence, Rova Toysvah's ruling that the child who was born after 12 months, namely, it was a three-month delay, is based on these uh, uh, opinions. Just that Rovo Teisvo shows you how extreme that could be. A, a birth can be delayed even three months. Just as a parenthetical remark, uh, it's the, uh, many of us are exposed to women who uh, complete their nine month of pregnancy and still haven't given birth and there's a great deal of, of uh, a great deal of concern and worry over their situation let it be um, let this Gemara be at least a, a, a source of comfort or if not a, maybe a partial source of comfort that uh, there is a precedent for birth delays and they could be quite extreme as you can see in this Gemara but of course uh, the moral markings will recommend uh, careful uh, medical attention and uh, to behave according to the the laws of Teva that the Almighty created. The on the side we have a uh, no say a topic heading, and we've been alluding to this since the beginning of today's shiur. Here we see Simone, Srischamo, and Eilinus, the signs the physical signs that indicate that a person is in fact, if it's a man, a sorus, and a, if a woman, an eyeliness. Now these are the signs we alluded to before, not just that the individual has passed the expected age of adult to 12 for a girl, 13 for a boy, have not produced the pubic hairs. They reach the, uh, we'll say age 20 even though we saw a couple of different opinions on the matter, just for to keep things simple they reach age 20 still having produced no pubic hairs before we can establish that they are either a saurus or an islandist, there have to be other signs as well and that's the topic at hand and here we have the you can also see the uh, double underline uh, uh, highlighting those categories of, of saurus and uh, idleness. Tanu Rabbonin, Ezehu Sris Chamo. What is the sign of a person being a Sris Chamo? Kol Shehu Ben Esrim Velohevi Shtei Cyrus. Anyone that reaches age 20 and has not yet produced the two hairs, the two pubic hairs, Vafilu Hevi Lachar Mikan, even if he produced them afterwards. That isn't going to make a difference. Harehu kisoris lechodvarov. He then is considered a soris regarding all matters. The elu hein simonov. And the following are the signs. Kol she'ein lo zokon. Anyone that doesn't produce a beard. The syro lokui. And his hair is very soft. Ubesoro machlik. We're dealing again with a male. So he has he has besoro. Uh, his flesh is soft. It's not hairy. It's lacking hairiness, which is characteristic of a normal male. Rabbi Shumam Leil Omer, Mishum Rabbi Huda Ben Yoyer. Rabbi Shumam Leil says, in the name of Rabbi Huda Ben Yoyer, kol she'en meimov malin resichus. A man whose urine uh, doesn't uh, produce, uh, let's say, uh, heat. The yesh omrim kol amatil mayim ve'ein oise kipa. Another opinion is that when he urinates, he doesn't. It doesn't come out with a in a stream uh, that 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 flows at a distance. Another opinion says anyone whose semen is uh, liquidy like water, which is not characteristic of the normal consistency of male semen. Another opinion says, anyone whose urine is not machmitzim. Uh, Rashi uh, says, 
it, that it doesn't turn foul smelling when you leave it in a vessel. In other words, that's the the fact that it doesn't turn foul smelling is a sign of srisus. Achirim, I'm continuing the source. Achirim Omrim Kol Sheroichets B'Moisak Shomim Vein Besaro Male Hevel. Anyone who in the cold season after bathing, so his, his uh, flesh doesn't produce heat, uh, heat or uh, some type of steam. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Omer Kol Shikolu Lakui. Any uh, man who has this type of distorted uh, voice. The ain nicker bein ish isha, and you cannot distinguish um, him in, uh, vocally from a woman. The Azui islandess, and what are the signs of a woman that we would categorize as an islandess? Kol shehi bas esrim, a woman who reached age twenty, v'lo hevio shte sarus, and has not produced the pubic hairs. V'afilu hevio liachar mikan, and even if she produces them afterwards. Harehi ka'ilinis lechodvara. Still, that won't change her status, and she's considered an ailinis regarding all matters. The elu hain simoneha. Now we're dealing with the female. The following are the signs. Kol she'ain la dodim. She doesn't produce breasts. Umiskashe b'shas tashmish. And in during intimacy, she experiences pain. Uh, Rashi explains Shipule Mayam Kamin Kaf. A Kaf is a, ordinarily we would say it's a spoon. Here it's some type of curvature, I would imagine. Uh, if she doesn't have this, Lamalo Meoisimokim above the female gender uh, organs, that if she lacks that shaping, so she is. According to Shemuel, that's a sign of idleness. Rav Shimon ben Elazar Omer, we continue in our source. Kol Shekila Ava, she has a a thick or a deep voice. Ve'enon Nikeres Bein Isha Leish, and her voice is such that you can't distinguish her from a man. We continue now in the Gemara after this uh, after the Tanaic source. Itmar Simone Soris, Rav Huna Omar Ad Shu Kulam. When we speak about the signs of a saurus, and as a result of that, categorizing someone as a saurus, Rav Huna says, um, this is not achieved until all of the above-mentioned signs appear. <coughs> Rabbi Yochanan Omar, afilu be'echod mehen. Even with the appearance of one of the signs, that would make them into a saurus. And we're, we're not going to... We, we mention... Uh, all the time, the category of source we've already seen in the la- recent dapim all, um, s- so many different hala- halachic ramifications of being a source that we're not repeating them now. So we're simply referring to someone categorized as a source, according to Rav Huna. Uh, it uh, it's not achieved unless all of the signs are uh, present, and according to Rav Yochanan, if even one of them appears. Hecha dehevi shte Cyrus kule alma lopligi the ad shu kulan. The way we read the Gemara, we re- we're reading with the according to the Gra, and he adds an explanation that where someone produced the two hairs after age twenty, and that's what the Gra's approach to this Gemara is. Where they produce the a, the two hairs after age twenty, then everyone would agree. It means Rav Huna and Rav Yochan will agree. Then, in order to be considered a sorus, you'd have to have all the signs of stresis. Namely, even Rav Yochan will concede that you'll need all the signs. Ki pligi, the machlokis Rav Huna and Rav Yochan is b'shelo hevi, where where the two where two pubic hairs do not appear. The Gemara continues. Elahadi Amar Luhu Rabo Baravua the Rabbanan. Rabo instructed the rabbis, Ainu Be Rav Nachman. Now Rav Nachman uh, apparently was a was a man that didn't uh, appear uh, as a regular healthy male with uh, all the different signs that one would associate with regular manhood. Uh, 
we're dealing on strictly on a physical level. We have to approach Gemaras like this with the utmost respect. We're dealing with one of the greatest of uh, men of all time, Rav Nachman. But on a physical level, he didn't appear, we'll say, regular. So the R- Rabba said to the Rabbana, check him out. E besoro ma hevel if he has that characteristic, which is one of the characteristics we mentioned in the source. You can see we have a little arrow to the side of the Gemara text. You can align this with the arrow above. So if his flesh uh, um, produced warmth, then Asiv le bras. So I will give him my daughter. So Rabbi Baravu was very interested in having uh, Rav Nachman as his son-in-law. But, of course, only if he would be a, a virile male capable of reproduction. So what is, what is uh, Rabbi Baravu in effect saying? That with one sign of health, healthiness, he's considered healthy. Meaning that if he's normal in one aspect, so he's He's not considered a Soros. He's normal in one aspect. So, Keman, Keravuna, is Rabo Baravua then ruling like Ravuna, that one is not a Soros unless all of the signs are present. All of the Soros signs are present. So, should we conclude that Rabo Baravua is ruling like Ravuna? Lo, we're not going to conclude that. Rav Nachman Sifi Dikno Haviole. Rav Nachman, as we mentioned before, he didn't appear, we'll say, totally normal in a in a manhood sense, in a male sense. However, he had Sifi Dikna. Rashi says Sifi Dikna Yisedus Azokin. The word Dikna, the Dalid, can be interchanged with a Zion. So if you do that interchange, you see that it becomes Zikna or Zokin. Yisedus Azokin. Uh, uh, the zakan is the beards. He had, he had uh, hair. Uh, you say those are, are pegs, uh, some type of uh, hair stubble. Klomar bekama mekoymas ava le seir bezikano. He had uh, facial hairs in different spots, uh, individual hairs. That is enough to to say, as we said before in the Gemara. That where you have a situation like that, the Gemara spoke about the Hecho de Hevi Shte Cyrus, where hairs appear. Here you have a couple of facial hairs that appeared. So everyone agrees that with even one sign of normalcy, of healthiness, he is not a Soros. Just to say that again, that in a case where you have Sifi Dikna, one would, everyone will agree, not just Ravuna. Everyone, even Rabbi Yochum, will agree that you'd have to have all the signs of Sresis in order to be considered a Soros. So if you have one sign of healthiness, he is not a Soros. We continue. Hasoros lo cholets velo miyabem v'chein ailenis. The Mishnah that uh, we uh, had on Daf Ayin Tes Omid Beis, at the end of the Mishnah, which it toward the end of the Mishnah, it said uh, in, a, in an unqualified fashion, "Hasoros lo cholitz v'lo miyabim v'chel aylinis lo cholitzis v'lo misyabemis." So, in teaching the two together, as you can see, we've dashed, underlined the key for, the key words. Katoni, the Gemara here continues. Katoni soros dumi the aylinis. The Mishnah teaches soros comparable to aylinis, similar to aylinis. Ma aylinis bideshem. I just like aylinis is something that can happen only uh, as, a, as a result of something uh, we'll say that Bidei Shemayim, something from heaven mean, meaning the girl was born that way Af Soros Bidei Shemayim so to the Soros referred to here is the function of something that happened uh, from birth not as a result of human intervention or, or impact or injury Ustamo Kerebi Akiva. And you have this unnamed section of the Mishnah that parallels Rabbi Kiva. Domar Bide Odom in. Only a Soros that's Bide Odom, that we call Sris Odom, only he does Chalitza Bide Shamayim. Lo. If it's a Soros Chamo, 
no chalitza. So that this section of the Mishnah, Soros Chamo, is that type of source that's born that way. Just like the Ayunis is someone born that way. And here the Mishnah is saying that the source is not cholitz, not miyabem. That basically means a sris chamo is not cholitz, nor miyabem. And if you look back in the Mishnah, that's what Rabbi Akiva had said. The sris chamo, lo cholitz, velo miyabem. So this is a, a, an example of what the Gemara claims is a stamo, an unnamed section of the Mishnah, an unnamed Mishnah, which parallels Rabbi Akiva. Hasoris shecholatz liyavimtoi. Lo posla, bo ala posla. Uh, um, uh, there were two brothers, and uh, and their names Reuven and Shimon, for example. Reuven died, leaving no children, but a widow. The surviving brother Shimon was a Soros. If he, the surviving brother Shimon, does chalitza with her, the Chalitza was basically totally unnecessary, so it doesn't render her psula, it doesn't render her unfit or disqualify this widow from marrying a kohen. Generally speaking, a regular chalitza, a woman who needed chalitza, and chalitza was done, she becomes disqualified from marrying a kohen, similar to the idea of a grusha, a divorcee being disqualified from the kuna. But a soris doesn't need to do chalitza in the first place. So if he does, it doesn't disqualify her. However, Bo'ala Pasla means if the Soros uh, uh, brother-in-law had intimacy with her, that does disqualify her from the Kuna very simply because uh, this is a forbidden form of intimacy, forbidden to the tune of Chiv Kores. It's a brother-in-law. Shalom Mokka Mitzvah. So the Gemara now wants to infer. Taimo de Boaluhu. What is the reason she becomes disqualified from the Kahuna? It's because he, the, the brother in law, had intimacy with her. And he represents a violation of a Kores level sin. Ho Achir Loi. However, if some outsider would have had intimacy with her, we're talking about a Shomeris Yavam or a a, a, uh, a woman who was waiting to have Yibum done if someone out, some outsider happened to have intimacy with her that would not disqualify her from the Kuna. so we continue now at the top of Pei Aleph Amad Aleph Lema Tevei Tifta the Rav Hamnuna let us say that what our Mishnah is inferring is a refutation of Rav Amnuna's point of view. Diyamar Shemeris Yavam Shezinsa Psula Liyavama. He says that a woman who's waiting for Yibum that has relations with some outsider, it disqualifies her from Yibum. Rashi at the top says Psula Liyavama Keeshesi Shezinsa. She would be unfit to the to do yibum just like a, a a standard married woman a married woman that has relations with some outsider she becomes forbidden to her husband and rashi adds the cave de since we since Rav Hamnuna, he parallels the the shomeris yavam shizinsa to an shizinsa that would make her as a zona that's a halachic category a woman who is a zona is forbidden to a kohen and hence asur lakuna so from Rav Hamnuna we see that a shomeris yavam shizinsa is unfit to her uh, to the to uh, to the brother-in-law for yibum purposes. That is because she is like an Asia's Asians, and so that's forbidden to her husband. And a woman like that is a Zona, and a woman that's called a Zona is Psula Lakuna. <coughs> Our Mishnah, on the other hand, says that the disqualification of the Yavama from becoming, uh, from, from eligibility to Kuna is only if he, the Yavam, who's a Soros, only if he, uh, since he's an Easter Kores, has relations with her, that and only that would disqualify her from the Kuna. So the Lord says, Lo, we're not going to say that our Mishnah and the inference for our Mishnah represents a refutation of Kuna. Hu hadin afilu liacher nami. 
the same would apply even if her if her uh, her, if she had intimacy with an uh, with an outsider, she would become unfit to the kuna. I did the ton of the day, and since the earlier section of the Mishnah was dealing with was focusing on the yavam, uh, it, the, 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 it spoke about the the yavam the who was a soris. Uh, where it said that the source that the that chalitza that he does doesn't disqualify her tana nami seifa b'diday. So when it spoke about the bia, it was a bia with him, but not to the exclusion of bia with someone else. That too would disqualify her, and hence the Mishnah is not to be read with the inference uh, mode as we uh, suggested beforehand. The chain aylinus shecholtsu la achim. Uh, the Eilinus sister-in-law that received Chalitza Lo uh, Pasluha they, that doesn't disqualify her from the Kahuna Baalua Pasluha but if she has intimacy with a surviving brother of her husband th- that would disqualify her Taimo de Baalua what is the disqualifying what disqualifies her the Eilinus is because of the intimacy the forbidden intimacy Ha lo ba lua lo. If this Eilinus uh, widow would not have been, um, wouldn't have had intimacy with the uh, with her brother brother in law, she wouldn't be disqualified from the kuna. Keman. So this Mishnah represents whose opinion? The lo Rabbi Yehuda. It's not like that of Rabbi Yehuda. The Rabbi Yehuda. Ha'omar, if it were Rabbi Yehuda, but he has said Eilinus Zonahi. Rabbi Yehuda uh, categorizes an Eilinus by the mere fact that she's an Eilinus as a Zona and hence disqualified from the Kuna. Our Mishnah is not saying that. So our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Yehuda. With that, we conclude our Shior.